So it's that time of year again, it's the US Masters. In betting terms, it's one of the biggest betting tournaments of the year. And certainly in terms of Betfair trading terms, it's my favorite tournament for a number of reasons. But if we look over a large number of years, there are a certain number of trends and characteristics that come out of this particular major that make it the perfect betting or trading tournament. And that's what we're going to explore in this video. If you're interested in learning to use BetAngel, head on over to our website where you can download a free trial. If you're interested in learning how to use it, then head over to the BetAngel Academy where you can do exactly that. And if you want to talk to like-minded people, then head on over to our forum. So if you're going to profit by betting on the US Masters, you need to get the best odds available. Uh, why is that the case? Well, if we look at the odds at Odds Checker, um, I'm going to explore this in a bit more depth in a second. I can find players on Odds Checker that are available to back from the range of 50 to 100. So if you put £10 on at 50 to 1, you'll win 500. If you put 10 at 100, then you will win 1,000. There's a massive difference that you can make to your betting if you actually pay a little bit of attention and get the best prices available. The quickest way to understand, which is why it's never published and you have to do the work yourself, uh, where the best odds are is to look at the overround on each individual sports book or bookmaker. When I looked at Odds Checker earlier today, I noticed that the overround was between 135 and 200%. There's a vast range of difference there. But fundamentally speaking, anything over 100% is the margin, the money that you are going to pay to the bookmaker. So you can see that even at the best possible prices available there, you're still going to give 35% of your money to a bookmaker. So my solution to your problem is don't use a sports book or a bookmaker. Use an exchange. On an exchange, the amount of overround that you have hovers very, very close to 100%. At 100%, there's no advantage to either side of the market and you will make more money by betting on an exchange. And the interesting thing about an exchange as well is you can actually offer money to the market. So you don't have to take the odds that are available. You can actually put your own odds in as well. And that means that you've got a much better chance of profiting in the long term if you use a betting exchange. So how would you like to back a winner at a golf tournament? Of course you would. How about getting them at odds of 500 to one? Even better. And the big problem that you have at most golf tournaments is that the field, the number of players that could possibly win is absolutely huge. So how on earth do you pick that winner? Well, the answer is that what you actually do is you actually pick a range of potential winners. You say, these are the number of players that I think have a chance. This is how much I want to win. And on software like BetAngel, you press a button and away it goes. So if you use Dutching, or more specifically advanced touching on Bet Angel, you can actually define how much you'd like to win based upon a certain number of players going on to win. Um, or you can cover some of those little outsiders that you think potentially have a chance that you don't want to stake too much on, but you want to be able to return a certain amount. So if you're using Dutching on a golf tournament, it's a great way of being able to capture that value. You basically decide how much you want to win, or you decide how much stake you want to put into the market. You select the number of players that you're interested in, and BetAngel does all of the rest for you. So most of you will know that I am a trader and what I do is I buy and sell odds at different prices as a tournament progresses and I net the profit between the two and this is an incredibly effective way of trading golf where, excuse the pun, there are a significant number of swings in the odds over the course of the tournament. Uh, so let's explore in a little bit more depth some of the tactics that I use when I'm trading at Augusta. So one of the key ways that I trade on golf is actually profile the course and that's very easy to do at places like Augusta where there's plenty of information available. You can actually download prior years scorecards, how the hole performed over a certain number of years, how many birdies and bogeys there were at those particular holes, and that will give you a neat profile of the entire course. And when players approach the harder holes, you would probably look to lay them as they go through those harder holes where they could potentially drop shots. And if they're going through easier holes and then another group of players going through a harder set, um, then you could back those players um, that are a little bit further along on their particular round in order to benefit from the fact that they will probably pick up shots and the other players may drop shots. That will significantly impact the odds of those players as they go around that particular course. So understanding the course is a really key part of being able to trade golf effectively. 
one of the most famous parts of Augusta is Amen Corner and it's not untypical for players to start dropping shots on this particular course. Defending champion Tiger Woods in 2020 actually managed to score a 10 um, around this particular part of the course and then managed to actually pick up a load of birdies on the easier part and it's a great illustration of the way that this particular course trades. Now one of the most famous moments at this particular part of the course was when Jordan Spieth was priced at 109 to win the Masters coming up to that little difficult part of the course and he completely blew it on the 12th hole and Danny Willett who'd already passed through and was going on to easier holes all he needed to do was not to drop any shots to be able to win the Masters which was exactly what he did Jordan Spieth had a bit of a nightmare and basically handed the entire championship to Danny Willett Now when you're looking at golf, one of the key protagonists in the way that a course will play is the weather. If you get significant rain, wind, um, it can cause a number of issues. And as a consequence, you have to be a weatherman if you're going to be able to trade golf effectively, especially in the earlier rounds, because you tend to find that because there are such large numbers of players going out of different groups at different times, the weather can significantly change the way that the course plays. A good example of this was in 2020 when they decided to shift the Masters from March to November and the course was playing significantly softer and that significantly benefited the longer hitters because the ball would basically not travel as far and therefore that extra distance that you could get became a significant advantage. But it's very important to keep an eye on the weather, especially with varied tee times because that will make a significant difference to how hard the course plays at certain holes. Always remember that golf tournaments are played predominantly in two phases. You've got uh, the first two days are all about trying to make the cut, trying to get to the weekend. So if you have players who are perhaps at bigger prices, who have a potential chance to play at the weekend, they may go for those crazy sort of shots. You'll be able to get them at really good prices to be able to trade out a little bit later. But as we move to the weekend, it's all about trying to win the tournament. So you'll get players at the front of the field trying to play safe that are potential lay opportunities from a trading perspective. And you've got players just below them that are going to try and make a bit of a move that give you potential back opportunities. But as long as you remember that the tournament is split over those two phases and they trade very differently, you should be able to take advantage of that. So golf is a sport that I've successfully bet and traded on over a large number of years. It's very enjoyable to watch too, as well as actively trading it. But I hope that in this video I've given you a few hints and tips as to how you can do that as well.